Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff, and welcome to an exciting day. Uh, I have wanted to make another one of these coffee tables ever since I made the first one of these coffee tables. Uh, this is my own design, it's my favorite piece of furniture I've ever made in my life, and I finally have the opportunity to make another one, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so, Walnut and Nara. Unity coffee table. Let's get going. <laughs> So, as always, we are going to start with picking out our materials. Um, starting with the walnut panels, that'll be the top and bottom shelf. And the uh, guy that ordered this coffee table from me told me to make it as wacky and wonderful as I felt. So, I decided to go with the craziest grained walnut that I could find in the stack. Um, and I still, you know, even though you want to pick the wonky stuff with the fancy grain and all that stuff, you still want to be a, a cohesive unit with the lines working together and stuff. So I did take a fair bit of time thinking it through and deciding on an orientation that I wanted for the panels. And then I could get to uh, doing a quick skip plane on everything uh, so I could see a little bit better what I was working with, get things a little bit flatter uh, before I marked out the final orientation using little triangles where things were going to go together later uh, so I didn't get anything mixed up once I started cross-cutting and uh, milling everything down into nice straight square etc etc. Um, then we mark a straight edge on the wonkiest of them that didn't have an anywhere near straight edge so that I could uh, take the wonky bit off the side of it and get it close to straight before I took it over to the jointer where I could give it a pass or two to clean up the uh, bandsaw marks just to get it flat enough to ride against the table saw fence so that I could get a square parallel edge opposite it and then do one little tap over with the fence and flip the board over and do that original side again with that. And then we can get it glued up into a panel by glue glue gluing and flop, flop, flopping, and clamp, clamp, clamping. And when, when it's uh, not quite set up yet, you can take a couple of clamps off and scrape off some glue so it doesn't hurt your blades later. And uh, we're looking at panels. And we can get the low angle jack out and make sure that it's a nice flat surface that we're working with for later. And we can put it aside and get working on the base. Which is this piece of 12 quarter Nara and that piece of 8 quarter Nara. And that piece of 8 quarter Nara is exactly the amount of wood that I need like almost to the cubic centimeter. Uh, but I didn't have a, anything to cross cut the uh, 12 quarter with other than a hand saw, so I had to do that. And then we find the uh, center of the eight quarter and measure the table saw fence off that. And we can start our resaw over at the table saw by just raising the blade, flipping the board, raising the blade, flipping the board and uh, getting uh, two and a half-ish inches through from both sides before we take it over to the bandsaw. Just, it's a lot quicker that way. I'm not patient enough resawing on the bandsaw, just doing it all the way on that. So this way is actually a lot quicker and it doesn't waste that much extra material. Just gotta take a little ridge out of the inside, off the top, uh, out of the inside of the resaw that's left over because of the difference in the curve sizes, but that's not that big a deal. And then we can chop the legs out of the 12 quarter. Basically just use the width of the board to set the fence, tipped it over sideways and cut out two pieces, which make four legs, because we cross cut those after on the sled. Uh, but then we're back to the milling machines, jointer, jointer, and uh, get things cleaned up and squared up 
back over to the table saw so that we can get things cut to width. You can pull out the crosscut sled and get cutting things to length. I actually I needed to get a short piece and a long piece out of each of these pieces of Nara. So I cut all the short ones first using a stop block and then I could cut all of the long ones at the same time with the leftovers by matching up one end and just ripping down the edge of them. And as you can see, this is what's left. <laughs> and you'll see how much I am going to be left with out of that whole piece of Nara. What gets cut off here is the excess that I had out of that eight quarter board. That's the leftovers. And this is the part that is probably the most important stage in creating a piece of furniture, to me anyway. It's going through all of your wood once it's milled up and deciding exactly what piece goes where, which face faces which direction, what's the top of each one so that the grain is cohesive, especially when you're going to be cutting curves into stuff. You want the grain to not be fighting those curves. Uh, and then we can start marking the uh, the mortise placement on the end of all of these. I'm using floating mortise and tenon for the construction on this one again. Uh, so I mark all those out with a pair of squares that remain set. And then I can put them up in my Moxon vise and get cutting. Little passes, short, little sort of quarter inch at a time. It's projects like this that make me want to invest in a domino. Eventually, we got them all, all the mortises cut in all of the rail pieces. Then we can get back to working on the legs. We cross cut them to, well, length, which equals the height of the legs. Um, yeah, that's a weird way to think of it, but yeah, cross cut them to length, which is the height of the leg. Uh, using a stop block over at the fence there. Do not cross cut things against the fence, use a stop block that you then pass on your way up to the blade uh, or it will pinch and it will kill you. Uh, then again, we uh, work on grain orientation. The legs wasn't quite as big a deal because it's essentially a rift sawn piece of material anyway, so it's relatively straight grain on all four sides, but you still want to take the time to figure out which one you want where and uh, mark it up so that it's permanent. And then uh, mark the joinery out on these ones as well. I also marked the bevel that I'm going to put at the top of all four legs. Uh, just so as another sort of mm, safety measure, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, so that I don't get things confused later. Cut the mortises into those and we can cut the tenon stock. Again, if you've seen me do this process before, you'll know that I use quarter inch hobby oak material from the big box store to make my tenons most of the time and then we can just get to cutting I believe there are 24 tenons involved in this whole project and then we can do a test to make sure that everything is going along well before we get to the first dry fit which is a really good place to be starts to make you think like you maybe know what you're doing. And then we can take it out of its first of many, many dry fits that are going to occur during this process. And we can start marking up the curves on everything. And for that, I just use a cutoff of whatever, something thin that I can bend to uh, measure up in the middle however high I want the curve to go and that's just the offcut from the tenon stock I think and then I can draw that on and what I do is I make one master of all of the parts there are three different size parts in this thing so I'll make one of the long rail one of the short rail and one of the leg and I'll finalize those curves the way that I want them on the spindle belt sander and once I've got them where I want them to be and I can transfer those curves onto the other parts so that they all match up. And I can get cutting those out too, and sanding those out, etc, etc, etc. 
And then I can do another dry fit and it's amazing what a difference just a few curves make. Like when you compare that to the blockiness that it was before. Uh, then we can get back out another piece of walnut and start working on the uh, cross members, I guess we'll call them, that lift the, uh, the top and uh, shelf up. So they're what actually attach the panels to the base. Um, and what we need to do is we need to sneak up on these guys. We cut them all just slightly bigger than they need to be. We can cut them to width. I think they're a three inch width. Uh, and we can get those all cut. And then once we've got four of those, we can uh, essentially match them to the space that they're going in by now that it's dry fit all together we can just sneak up on the length of cut using a stop block make a cut go check it still a little big make bump the fence or the stop block a little bit until we get it to fit in just nice and snug and then we can cross cut the rest of them now that the uh, stop block is set where it needs to be and then, once again, we can head back over to the Moxon Vice and uh, cut some more mortises. See what I mean? Like, I need a domino. Somebody buy me a domino. <laughs> uh, marking and plunging and routing and, and then filling with a, essentially a domino. I could do this table in half the time if I had a domino, probably. But... It is what it is. And then we can mark out the corner that we're going to nip off that uh, under that raises the uh, the panels. So you'll see in a minute. We'll find uh, the, the hole saw size that we're going to use that gives me the, uh, the curve that I want on that little notch. And chuck it up in the drill press and just trim off that little, that little corner bit. And then we gotta line these things up. These things are gonna have to attach to the side rails, the long rails. So we gotta plunge the matching mortise into those pieces. And uh, then, where, we get, what do we do now? We do another dry fit? Yeah, okay, so another dry fit. And then we can go back to the panels because now the base is essentially done and we can final size the panels based on the dry assembly of the base. So we uh, rip that to width, cross cut it to length, then we gotta mark the little notches out for the legs. And I just use a, a protractor, and I don't know, it's set to maybe three quarters of an inch. It's not, it doesn't really matter what it's set to, as long as it's about the look that you want, and it's the same on all four corners. And that's getting to look like a pretty nice coffee table there already, but there's still a ways to go. <laughs> it's always still a ways to go. Sharpen up a chisel or two, and we'll get cleaning up those uh, raggedy notches that I cut with a jigsaw. Oh, uh, yeah, that's. I don't think I need to explain that. Then we can mark the uh, bevel from the mark that I made on the top of the legs earlier, and match the sled. The uh, what are those things called? That thing that I'm using there. Miter gauge! Mark, we can set the miter gauge to that angle that I had previously drawn on the leg. And we can get to uh, cutting that little bevel off the top of all the legs. And then we can do the first of what is going to be, end up being hours and hours of sanding on this project. Uh, at this point we're just breaking edges and taking everything up to, I want to say 120, 150, something like that, just basically to get everything a consistent smoothness and break all the edges before we can start gluing things up. Uh, I'm doing this in sub-assemblies, so I'm gluing the side assemblies together and then I'll put everything back together in dry fit while that glue is setting with just the side assemblies glued so that we don't have to worry about things not going back together later um, and make sure that things are as square and 
set and the shoulders are all seated and everything. And then we can get that clamped up back into dry assembly and then we can go back to working on the cross member pieces that we're gonna have to drill holes and for screws that we're gonna slot in there. Uh, we're gonna mark the depth that we need that screw to be so that we don't end up putting the screw through the tabletop when we're attaching it later. So once we've got the depth marked where we're gonna want the screw head to rest on the inside of this cross piece, we can get drilling those out. We, uh, I, I want to say that's a 3 8 inch Forstner bit that we're going to drill out down to that depth and then we're going to go all the way through with a straight bit, I, which I don't have enough throat throw or however, whatever it's called on my drill press to go all the way through. So I had to go all the way through with the hand drill and then we can slot the holes just by a little bit of side pressure and up and down and up and down on the drill press and you can see what I'm doing here when I drop that in it's free to drop in and it's free to move back and forth so that the tabletop and the bottom panel can expand and contract with uh, moisture changes in the air uh, otherwise you will crack something if you just screw things cross grain to each other and then we can get the uh, cross member pieces glued into the side member pieces and get it back all up into yet another assembly while that glue sets and then while that assembly bit is together I decided to go around and just get everything sanded up I want to say at this point I am sanding everything to 180 or 220 and it takes forever and it sucks And because before we do the final assembly, we actually have to get the panels finished. So now we're back sanding and prepping on the panels. Uh, there were some little knots and things that I wanted to fill with some epoxy. So tape up the underside, fill those up with some West systems. I wish at the, looking back on it that I would have dyed the epoxy so that it wasn't yellow, but you don't really notice it anymore little mini knots like this and so one of them I actually had a, the knot come out altogether while I was uh, working on the panel so what I did is I just planed off a nice little walnut shaving off a piece and I rolled it up and filled it with a rolled up piece of walnut and uh, filled the epoxy around that and I thought there was a cool little solution that actually ended up looking pretty neat uh, this is the bottom shelf of the panel anyway so Nobody's probably gonna ever notice, but I thought it was a, a neat little uh, little thing to do. And then we can just do a quick round over on all the edges before we finish sand and uh, get everything ready to be assembled. On the inside corners of those little notches, I had to get in there with some some files and stuff just to round over those little bits because the bearing on the trim router didn't really get quite all the way to the inside so you got to clean those up a little bit and then uh, more sanding 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 get the panel sanded up to 240 brand my logo on the bottom of both of them uh, sand that back to get rid of all the little sort of heat residue that happens when you're branding things and then you can finish your finish prep by wiping everything down with a tack cloth and then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let this roll and you can watch the finish go on and watch it come alive. That's pretty nice. <laughs> and then we can take apart the, the last 
the dry assembly for the last time, I hope, and we can work on getting the base finished. I, I finished the whole project with a medium walnut tinted Danish oil um, for a couple of reasons. I wanted the, uh, when walnut ages, it tends to lighten over time, and I kind of wanted to keep that rich, dark chocolate tone for as long as I could, so I thought using some some tinted Danish oil would maybe help that out and then by using it on the Nara as well I thought it would darken the Nara and bring it a little bit closer to the walnut in terms of its tone um, which I think it did I, it did richen it up and darken it up so that it, there was a little bit more cohesion between the base and the top while you can still obviously tell that they are different woods because it's they're clearly different woods and there is a a contrast between them it makes them more complementary and uh, more yeah just more of a cohesive tone between the base and the top and here we go we got to go get the panel the bottom panel goes into the inside before we can do the final glue up got the bottom glued in but not clamped and then we can get the top glued in and clamp it all up because like that the bottom panel will not go into the glue up if you glue that base all together uh, and then try to figure out a way to get that bottom panel in there it will not work <laughs> so got to make sure before final assembly that bottom panel is in there um, and it's never coming out <laughs> there we go the final 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 glue up and then we can I buff a coat of the Howard's Feed and Wax in there, just uh, for an added layer, and then, and this way I can give the owner a little tin of Howard's to refresh the table once in a while. I think I did three coats of Danish oil on the whole thing, uh, so the Howard's isn't seeping in super deep, but it does add a, a nice little oily wax layer to the top that cures. and. Uh, yeah, so that's the finish that I used. And then we can work on getting everything perfectly lined up before we start driving screws through those bottom cross member pieces into the top and getting it assembled. Final, final assembled. So close, we're so close. And like I said, those slots in those holes will allow those panels to expand and contract with moisture changes. So once everything's lined up, I can crawl underneath, and do the bottom, and we are done. That's the Unity Coffee Table. Whew. Well, there she is. That is the Unity Coffee Table in Nara and Black Walnut. And I'm very happy that it's done and that I'm about to deliver it. And I will put some pictures up of her in her new home um, so you can see the final result. I hope the recipient is going to be happy with it. I have a feeling that he is. Remember, I do have a Patreon page and an Etsy store if you want to support what I do here. I'll leave links to those down in the comments or in the in the thing down there below the video. <laughs> and uh, until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye for now. Yep. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to deliver this coffee table and start my first ever guitar for an international global luthiery contest. Because I am terrible at making decisions. <laughs> All right.